Hi everyone, very very good morning and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep. My name is Alpa Sharma and this is our weekly editorial analysis. I hope I'm clearly audible and visible to everyone. Very good morning. So I'm so happy to see you guys back after one long week and I've brought a very very interesting uh, and a very tricky article for you. I'll exactly tell you what this article talks about but before that let's quickly have a look at why do we have these classes what do we learn out of it hi ayush so good to see you back now see uh, the articles that i bring these are the articles that can come up in the examination as an rc1 so when you read them you have an insight on the kind of passages you might see in cat and other mb entrance examinations apart from that you also learn how to read these articles so that you understand them because i have been time and again saying this to you that reading a passage mindlessly will never lead you to the correct answers to the questions that are there okay good morning kaushal uh, diya and maitre amrit sankirtana very good morning so back to it if you read articles mindlessly you will never get the answers correct so how do you read an article mindfully usko kaise padhna hai usko kaise process karna hai kaun se lines pe dhyan dena hai and then what are the things i need to find while i'm reading an article that's exactly what we're going to be focusing on now let's quickly have a look at the agenda of the class uh, and i'm going to address another pointer which has been coming up in the minds of a lot of people So, along with the uh, the article that I have brought today, what are we going to do? I have one article. Uh, this article came up in the uh, the the New York Times, yes. And uh, you see, New York Times, the Guardian, these are the two newspapers. जहाँ से बहुत frequently articles आते हैं. So this article is not from the Aeon. Last week हमने Aeon का article किया था. आज मैं New York Times एक article लेके आई हूँ. बहुत सारे words हैं vocabulary के which you might not know the meaning of. We'll learn a lot of vocabulary today. and we'll see what the tone of the author is the summary of the article and we'll try to draw inferences now before i show you the actual article there is something uh, okay sankirtana has a question i have a question how to correctly answer inference question getting confused by options okay sankirtana uh, just a minute just a minute guys give me a second guys my video team is sending me messages uh, is my voice echoing today i have moved to a new uh, office space and which is pretty empty so i think that's why the echo is uh, there i'll try to fix it next time today we're going to make do with whatever is available with us okay theek hai so sankirtana ka question pehle ye address karungi main if you have inference options you, if you, and if you get confused by the uh, answers if you get confused by the options iska correct approach kaise hota hai options eliminate karne ka dekho sankirtana if there are two aspects to it and everyone please be very attentive with the two aspects i'm going to be writing that down one if you are reading an article if you are investing time in reading an article you have by the end you have to know the main idea of the passage because even if there is no main idea question no summary question no tone question but inference questions are going to be ample in cat and other mb entrance examination specifically cat okay and whatever you are able to infer from the line from the passage given the inference is going to be e with alignment to the main idea i'll repeat ab jo bhi inference draw karoge wo aapke main idea se align hota hua hi hoga koi bhi inference ek passage mein it will not go far away from the main idea it will talk about things on similar terms do you guys agree to it so while you are reading a passage and you crystal clear know exactly what is the author from the beginning to the end trying to tell you your ability to eliminate options becomes very very easy okay so uh, just a minute guys uh here we go guys i'm putting myself my video on pause for a second yeah so ultimately understanding it uh eliminating options is going to be easy 
when you know the main idea. So if you are stuck between two options, remember one option that's too much away from the main idea can never be your answer. Two, after you know the main idea and you focused on what exactly is the passage trying to say, if you're still confused between two options, I would recommend apart from practicing uh, how to infer which lines to focus on, you could go back to the passage and see where exactly is this answer stemming out of. If there are two very, very close options, very likely two lines before and two lines after that exact extract where you're trying to infer things will lead you to the correct answer. So, though close options jab hote hai na aapke paas, dekho un dono options mein difference kya hai. Once you identify the difference, see which one is closest to the main idea, which one is closest to the extract where you're inferring things out of. Kaha wo closest hai aur kaha uske aage ki do lines, peeche ki do lines aapko hints de rahi hai clear answer mein. These are a few techniques which will help you find out a clear answer to your inference question. So that's going to be main idea and two, referring back if this extremely close option and you can't think about the correct answer, see what is the difference between the options and then referring back and differentiating between them. Referring back and seeing do line pehle, do line baad mein exactly baat ho kis context mein rahi hai. So that's how you eliminate close options everyone. I hope that's clear to you Sanketana. Hi Gagandi, good to see you after a long, long time. Okay, now I'll get back to it. I'll uh, discuss a bit more about, uh, you know, finding correct answers to questions. As I had said in the beginning of the passage, a lot of people read mindlessly. And you are supposed to learn how to read mindfully. Us case maybe Sanketana, aapke liye bina refer back kare. A correct answer do na bohat easy hoga. How you should find the correct answer without referring back? That is, when you passage, padte ho, in, us pure passage ka ek picture aapke dimag mein set hoga. So, while you're reading, ek ek paragraph mein dhyan dena ki wo paragraph kis cheez ki baat kar raha hai. How does it link to the next paragraph? There's a flow of information that you would see. Once you see the flow of information, Sankitana uh, and others, structure of the passage para completion type questions because you see the flow aapko pata hai flow aage kaise badhega summary based questions ye sab aap answer kar paoge to wo flow of information aaj ke article mein dekhte because aaj ka article easy nahi hai for sure it's a very tricky article so we'll see how am i supposed to make a flow in the information that's given to me in the passage and what are the lines i need to focus on which are going to lead to inferential questions. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing now. Let's start with the article. Let's focus on which lines to focus on, how to make a flow of the information with the tricky article that I've brought for you. Okay, apply karke dekhte, dekhte, wo aapko inference mein aur help karta hai, kya? Achha, apne se, are there people who are still confused with close options in the summary based or the main idea questions? How many of you are still confused with the summary based questions, close options and main idea, close options? I'd like to know that. Because that is something which is very, very necessary. Wo bohat sare forms mein aata hai examination mein. And this is one thing which certainly helps you eliminating close options with other questions as well. Disha, you are, okay. Uh... Okay, Danyesh, you as well. Even Venice, you are. Hmm, okay. Aisa karte, uh, Avinash, a lot of people are. Chalo, let's do something. While we read this article, by the end, I'll give you four options. Okay? Main idea confusing hai, bachche, ek baat yaad rakhna meri. I, I'll, I'll say something very clearly from all the years of experience that I have. If you do not know the main idea by the end of the passage, you are very likely going to mark incorrect answers with a lot of questions. It directly comes up as summary, main idea question, structure based question, tone question. It is indirectly also asked in the form of uh, uh, author stance, inference questions, uh, para completion. All of these are interlinked. Okay, so today we have passage. I have given four options and I will exactly tell you how to close options eliminate the options to eliminate the answer. Dhurne ke liye. Here we go with our passage. But before I show you the passage, I have to show you a couple of things. 
and that is uh, no we'll do that later on this is our first page okay so we will be reading this passage with two things in our perspective one how do i know the exact main idea so that i'm not confused with the close options and two inference kaise draw karenge theek hai in dono cheezon pe aap specific focus karte hain read the page and send me done I drop my phone, which is okay. Now my first question what is the topic of the passage what is the topic of the passage what is the passage trying to say ye kaun se genre ko belong karta hai kya baat kya kar raha hai ye decision making for sure but decision making not like the zag decision making topic it links decision making to where decisions are affected uh no dear i would disagree that's not the topic of the passage इस पेज को पढ़ के क्या समझ में आता है वट इज द टॉपिक योर जॉब नो नो दिनेश जॉब इज ओनली अ पार्ट ऑफ द प्रेमिस हियर मेकिंग डिसीजन इन जॉब मेकिंग डिसीजन अबाउट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू इट एन ऑमलेट और समथिंग एल्स दीज आर examples where decision making is involved so job is only a premise and remember premise will never be your main idea it will be a supporting statement to your main idea decision making in choices acha ab dekho dekho kya sikha rahi ho idhar dhyan dena sab log whenever you try to find the main idea you have to be very very attentive with the first and the last paragraph the first paragraph will be more like an introduction and the last paragraph will more likely be uh, a conclusion or a closure and when you link both of them the entire story that has been discussed falls between them linking the first and the last will give you exactly very likely exactly the main idea not 100% of the times but for sure 90% of the times this is going to be the case unless and until there's an exceptionally difficult passage now if i pay attention to the first paragraph it links economy economics rather and decision making so decision making about eating things or decision making about uh, choosing job offers these are merely examples to denote the fact that while you're making a decision there's an economic approach to it there are multiple approaches one of them is maximizing expected utility what is utility i get the maximum benefit out of the decision that i make okay how do i maximize my utility it could be weighing a single criterion for example the job offer the job offer was merely an example so ultimately what i'm trying to teach you here is we have decision making linked 
with economy, economics in some way or the other, which probably will be discussed in the next few paragraphs. So there are some, a lot of people who have sent me their uh, topics. Let me see. Decision making between which satisfies your choice and which is the correct for your life. Yes, Sanketana, you're right. Making decisions are often connected to our pleasure and maximizing benefit. Exactly, Yashveer. Or wohi utility hoti hai. Kisi bhi ki utility, mujhe pen karidna hai. Which pen am I going to buy? The one that's, that has the maximum utility for me. So mere liye agar uska usage high hai, so there are multiple criteria. If I want to buy a pen, if my priority is cheap, not expensive, so I'll first go to the market, I'll say, Bhaiya, 20 rupai ke ka pen dikhao. I'll not talk about which writes the best. He wouldn't show me a Parker for sure because price is my constraint. But if my constraint is quality, I would put price at the second pedestal. So what are the criterions that are kept in mind while you make decision is what the passage talks about. Okay, I hope that's clear to everyone. Let's continue this because this is a tricky topic. One thing we've learned is we've paid attention to the first paragraph and we'll see by the end if we are able to link the first paragraph to the main idea. Let's go to the next page. Okay. Achha, one more thing. Uh, something like this can also lead to a question. Satisfies or what could satisfies be? So it's basically a combination of satisfaction and sufficing. Okay, it's enough for me maybe not the best but it's enough for me it suffices my needs that i want a pen that's cheap okay plus i'm satisfied with it maybe not very cheap maybe instead of 20 it's for 25 but i've got a, i've got a good quality so it's a combination of both that we're looking out of while we make decisions let's go to the next page read this page and send me done My first question, <clears throat> can lexicographic ordering be a method of decision making? Can a lexicographic method be a method of decision making? Can I take decisions? effectively through the lexicographic method yes according to the author it is a method ab dekho ye baat maine aapko batayi but while you are reading and making a mind map you have to think it on your own that, okay, there's a new term, lexicographic ordering. What is it? What does it have to do with the passage? It is a way of decision making. There are multiple examples. Red light hai lekin, ek police wala khada, he says go. Are you going to go or stop? You're going to go. Because the police wala's gestures, they come before the uh, light. Okay, so there's an order in which you choose choose karte ho. Okay, aapki priority kis cheez mein hai. So, aap us priority ke basis pe apne decision making ko level karte ho. So, if your decision making depends on three things, you will set them in the order of priority. First, second, third. And of course, you will first give priority to the first decision making parameter which impacts the process of decision making. This always takes priority over these two. These two could be anything. There are multiple examples like following the signal. Or see, look at this one as well. This is such a brilliant example. This has bigger numbers, but this overall number is bigger than this. Yeh hamara mind conditioned hai. Can I say prioritizing one parameter over the other is a result of mind conditioning? Can I infer this? Exactly, Disha. I'll be coming down to it. I'll repeat. Can I say that 
your prioritizing one parameter over the other is a result of conditioning of the mind your mind automatically tells you okay ye priority hai isko pehle follow karo ye nahi hoga to second cheez pe aayenge hum yes absolutely it's a result of your mind conditioning aapka mind aapko bolta hai na ye priority hai ye nahi hai ye priority hai pehle isko follow karo ye nahi hoga then you come to the second step now disha thank you for bringing out this very important pointer in the last paragraph the author says lexicographic ordering has benefits but it also can go bad aapki priority hai money while you choosing a job but then sirf 1 dollar additional kamane ke liye aap 500 mile extra nahi jaoge that means does decision making depend on one priority only it doesn't it's a mixture of many priorities of course there's a priority but the priority is relative to other priorities and the mixture leads to decision making on that note i will not tell you but if you have paid attention to this paragraph you will know the tone of the author we still don't know the tone because we have just read the second page but the second paragraph while you mind map what did you do in mind mapping here he introduces lexicographic ordering here he mentions the benefits of lexicographic ordering here he goes with the demerits of lexicographic ordering this is mind mapping this will help you with the tone of the author and the main idea by the end we'll keep this pending we'll still not discuss what the tone of the author is let's go to the next page everyone next page read this and send me done two very important things here yes disha see the first paragraph of this page justifies what you've written yes kaushal you're absolutely right i hope you could make a mind map here what was the mind map the mind map is analyzing the theory of lexicographic method and tweaking it a little to add more value to decision making by this paragraph this paragraph is an example of rather a premise where the author has quoted one person and refers to a simple rule of thumb for example lexicographic method mera simple rule of thumb hai if there's a red light but the police wala says go i'm going to go no matter what it's a simple rule of thumb rule of thumb kya hai ek blind rule aap blindly us rule ko follow karoge that's exactly what the method of heuristic is what is heuristic heuristics is why you have a simple rule you blindly abide by the rule you follow what your mind has decided according to a fixed criteria so if there are three things on which my decision making is dependent on the first thing is my priority and i'll always go by that if there's no first thing that's when i'll jump on to the second one it's a simple rule of thumb there's no if and but no tweaking there okay that's one any doubts here yes now i'll this bubble is more like a see if you look at the literal meaning it's more like a lantern but here a fragile bubble is something that can easily break like a very flimsy bulb it can break any time bahut dhyan se rakhna padta hai usko 
ठीक है अब लास्ट पैराग्राफ इंपॉर्टेंट है देखो इफ यू मेक अ माइंड मैप ये लास्ट पैराग्राफ इस पेज का क्या बोल रहा है ही एक्सप्लेन अनदर थ्योरी ऑन विच पीपल मेक डिसीशन वन ऑफ द थ्योरीज वॉज लेक्सिकोग्राफिक मेथड द नेक्स्ट इज एक्सपेक्टेड यूटिलिटी इट्स अ ट्रेडिशनल मॉडल दैट इकोनॉमिस्ट यूज टू मेक डिसीजन ओके एंड इज द ऑथर इन फेवर ऑफ द एक्सपेक्टेड यूटिलिटी थ्योरी हियर और इज ही क्रिटिसाइजिंग दिस थ्योरी हु विल एक्सप्लेन दिस Hmm, Karthik. Okay, that's what my question was. Others, is the author in support of the expected utility theory? Expected utility theory? क्या होती है? मैं ये decision लूँगा क्योंकि इसके utility maximum है मेरे लिए. Maximum benefit देगा ये मुझे. कितनी benefit दे सकता है? I have two pens to choose out of. This will go longer, right? For longer than the other one. This will give me more utility. I'll buy that one. That's something you expect out of the pen. In reality, that may not write longer than the other one, but that's expected out of it. He's absolutely critical of this theory. He says, "No, it does not work. It's a fragile bubble. It can burst any time." Okay, because when you expect something out of it, you can expect only. You can expect certainly only when things are fixed. Are they necessarily fixed? This world isn't. There are so many probable things. So working on one theory, prioritizing your expected utility over everything else, will be certain only when the outcomes are certain. And outcomes in this world certainly are not certain. Okay. एक example देती हूँ मैं आपको. ये समझाने के लिए कि ये कैसे wrong है. Expected utility. If you apply it to economics, it's a flawed theory because in economics. most of the things are uncertain for example value for money for example the uh, the currency that you're dealing with and the value that it holds everything is so uncertain that depending upon expected utility theory to make economic uh, decisions is going to be not a very efficient one okay let's go to the next page i hope you were able to make a mind map here so abhi tak jo kiya ek bar mind mein i will not repeat that make a mind map on your own where did we start with What all were the pointers the author has discussed till now? I'll give you twenty seconds for that. <clears throat> Let's move on. This page, send me done. my first question here in this page is the author criticizing the rule of thumb theory heuristics or is he appreciating it and while i ask you such questions why do i do that i want you to ask these questions to yourself is the author appreciating or criticizing the rule of thumb or heuristic approach Carefully answer this. He is appreciating it. He is favoring. नहीं दिशा लास्ट पैराग्राफ देखो. He is favoring it. Read the first line of the last paragraph. when everything is so uncertain up maximizing your utility expected utility is not the approach that you should use 
इट इज नॉट वर्क इट इज नॉट वर्क इन चेस इट इज नॉट वर्क इन अदर ऑप्शन तो जब चेस आप खेलते हो फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू हैव टू मेक अ डिसीजन देर किस बेसिस पे करोगे डिसीजन एक्सपेक्टेड यूटिलिटी इतना अनसर्टन सिनारियो है कर ही नहीं सकते फॉलो द रूल ऑफ थम इट इज नॉट जस्ट सेटिस्फैक्ट्री इट्स एन आइडियल फॉर्मैट टू बी फॉलोड इट गिवस यू रैशनल रिस्पॉन्सेज इन द कॉम्प्लेक्स एंड चेंजिंग मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक एनवायरमेंट यू सी हाउ इकोनॉमिक्स इज लिंक्ड टू डिसीजन मेकिंग इवन हियर वाइल यू रेड द फर्स्ट पैराग्राफ एवरी वन वेन आई आस्ट यूर क्वेश्चन वॉट इज द टॉपिक None of you were able to point out the link between at least a lot of you couldn't the link between economics and decision making. You had pointed out decision making, but you had missed out an important pointer linking it to economics. Do you see how the first paragraph has played a role here? Every paragraph now links economics to decision making, and that's why please be very careful with the first paragraph and the last one, which we'll see by the end. Okay? Exactly. Ha! But settling for it, Yashvi. Uh, Yashvi, on that note, I have a question for you. By this time, would you agree, Yashvi, that passage is more of an analytical one? He is trying to weigh in which process, which methodology of decision making goes best in economic scenarios. This may not be the best everywhere or in economics, but the best out of the lot that you have. would you guys agree with this does it also give you some hint about the tone of the author by this time yeah pros and cons so it's more of an analytical one and that's how you be very close with your tone here that's how you be very close with your main idea here and the structure structure based question aayega to kaise answer karoge the author starts with introducing you to the idea then he gives you pros of one cons of one then he analyzes the second methodology of decision making he sees the pros and cons of that as well in the tone is also analytical till this time so dekho bachche kya sikha abhi tak structure based tone based main idea based inference based ye sare questions na interlinked hote hain agar aap mindfully padhoge to aur mindfully padhte padhte aapko mind map banana bahut zaruri hai what exactly is this paragraph saying how is it linked to the previous one till now what have i read before i go further have i understood it till now just going to the next page because you have to read it will not help you see till this time okay make a gist in your head then go to the next page is going to be crystal clear to you fyi this might seem like a pretty time consuming one but then i can guarantee you something a week's practice and your speed is also going to come up Okay, next page. Here you go. My question, follow it, Bar. You're doing pretty fine here, Kaushal. You're actually doing good. My question is, which methodology of decision making is supported by the example of the dog and frisbee here? We have discussed a couple of methodologies. which is being cited indirectly here that's an inference question kaun sa methodology dikh raha hai is example mein frisbee or dog wala we have discussed some example uh, some methodologies by this time lexicography is it the rule of the thumb heuristic lexicography or 
expected utility which one of it is visible in the dog and the frisbee example lexicography which is synonymous to the rule of thumb for now or expected utility The rule of thumb, yes, lexicography is an example to that. It is the rule of thumb, heuristic or lexicography. No, no, dear, not expected utility. Expected utility nahi hai. Example, dekho kaise samjho. Dog ko kya dikhta hai? Usko science nahi pata hai ki frisbee kahan tak jayega. But dog ko sirf ek cheez dikh rahi hai, wo frisbee flying. Wo sab bool ke sirf frisbee pe dhyan de raha hai. De raha hai? Okay? Gaurav, dekho. Uh, there are three methodologies of decision making discussed here. Ek hai rule of thumb, lexicography. Pehle A aayega, uske baad hi B aayega, uske baad hi C aayega. Ye mera rule hai. A aayega to pehle A padunga. Fir uske baad hi B aayega. One ke baad hi two aayega. Rule of thumb hai, heuristic hai, lexicography hai. Vinis, understand this. When the dog looks at the frisbee, he only looks at the frisbee. The frisbee is his priority. Before everything else, does he is able to catch the frisbee? His decision making of where the frisbee would fall and he'll be able to catch it depends only and only on the frisbee. It's the rule of the thumb. He prioritizes the movement of the frisbee over everything else. That is his priority. This example represents the rule of thumb or lexicographic method or heuristic. These are interlinked here, but not the theory of expected utility. If मुझे कितनी utility मिलेगी इस frisbee को पकड़ के क्या वो मुझे candies देगा end में? No, no, no. Are, the dog is in concern. Okay. Now, in the next paragraph, the author uh, says, okay, expected utility is not so bad. It's still fine. There's a considerable virtue about that. Virtue is a positive thing. You remember virtue and vice? Vice are negatives, virtues are positives. So there's a virtue about that. Now, my next question. Is this virtue aiding to your decision making process or is it merely a sarcasm? Yes, the dog will run for it. So utility nahi hai usme kuch bhi kaushal. Exactly. My question, is this virtue of uh, expected utility actually a virtue? Does it help decision making processes or is it a sarcasm? Absolutely, it's a sarcasm. This is not a utility. This is not helping you. It's sarcasm. He says, A ki virtue hai, iska wo ye virtue hai ki wo textbook mein achche se likhi ja sakti hai, samjhai ja sakti hai. Lekin wo se textbook tak limited hai ye virtue. Beyond textbooks, it's not a virtue. If you, so it says, it is easy to explain it in textbooks. Sirf yehi ek achchi baat hai ki aap jab textbook mein likho ge, to expected utility aap achche se samjha sakte ho. But in real life, it is no virtue, no utility. Okay. Calculations can't be done if people don't actually make trade-offs. See, when a person decides to buy something, is everything certain? No, everything is not certain. Since everything is not certain, you remember in the penultimate page, we discussed a drawback of expected utility. It does not work with chess because everything as the outcome cannot be expected, cannot be certain. The world is uncertain in the world of chess and so in the case of economics and thus expected utility cannot help you because not everything is certain in the market. It's a criticism. It's a sarcasm. This virtue is a sarcasm to expected utility theory. Let's go to the next page. I think that's the second last page. Yes, read this and send me done. Yes, they indirectly are saying it's limited. Gaurav, I tell you what, this is late on the result. How do you find if it is sarcasm or serious? 
गौरव विफाई से गौरव बच्चे तुम तो टाइम पे आ गए क्लास में हाउ डू यू नो इट इज आर कैजम और सीरियस यू हैव टू सी इफ दिस हिडन क्रिटिसिजम लाइन देयर You have to see if there's a hidden criticism lying here as well. He says it has a virtue. Textbook में अच्छे से लिखा जा सकता है ये. Does it even help my decision making? It does. No, 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 no. Gorham, don't be sorry. I'm just trying to explain things. It has no utility in the real world. It's a criticism, a hidden criticism. This whole page is supremely easy. It's a criticism to the expected utility theory. Do you agree? This page is a criticism to the expected utility theory. Would you agree, guys? It's simple. There's nothing much to infer here. Do you do you guys agree? Yeah. There's nothing much to infer here. Two paragraphs full of premise, merely criticizing the expected utility theory that it does not work. It has a lot of drawbacks. Let's go to the next page, everyone. I think that is the last page. Oh uh, no, second last. Yeah. Read this page, everyone. Gaurav, you, if there are multiple examples justifying the same thing over and over again, and if you if you've understood what the author is trying to justify, you merely see the examples and you skip them. You don't even read them. But it's there's a prerequisite here that you've understood the theory, what the author is trying to explain. Usko hi bar 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 bar. You know, economy based, philosophy based passages specifically, and sociology based. ये तीन जो आर्टिकल्स होते हैं ना दे विल बी फुल ऑफ एग्जांपल्स टू जस्टिफाई द आर्गुमेंट मेड बाय द ऑथर इफ यू नो द आर्गुमेंट यू कैन एब्सोल्युटली मिस रीडिंग द फैक्चुअल डेटा एग्जांपल टाइप पार्ट्स There's another question that's there in my mind. If you have to mark the structure of the passage, what I say till this point, will that be correct or not? The author starts with introducing you to the idea of decision making, provides you with various methodologies of decision making, evaluating each one. on the basis of their pros and cons and prioritizes one methodology of decision making over the other is the second half correct here is the author prioritizing one methodology of decision making over the other with some tweaks here and there with the prioritized one yes anyone i'll ask you the question again is the author prioritizing one method of decision making over the other yes he is he's prioritizing the lexicographic method the rule of thumb the heuristic approach over maximizing utility approach he is prioritizing it yeah with certain tweaks here and there exactly he prioritizes lexicographic theory 
with the tweaks that are there in the last paragraph. He says, follow kar lo, but thumb rule ki tarah nahi follow kar lo, thoda sa tweaking kar lo, situation ke hisaab se. But then this methodology is still better than the expected utility one. This will certainly be better because he is weighing the pros and cons of both. He says this is better, thoda tweaking and it's going to be the best according to the required scenario. Let's come to the last page everyone. Read this please. Be very careful with the last two paragraphs. You'll know your main idea. अब देखो गौरव I also interviewed यहां आपको पता है I understand the argument this is another example ये कौन पर्सन है कहां आप काम करता है मुझे मतलब नहीं है लेकिन किस चीज को फॉलो करता है the beauty of fast and frugal rule of thumb such as lexicographic another paragraph to support मैंने और कुछ नहीं पढ़ा मैंने सिर्फ पढ़ा एक और example which supports the rule of thumb examples like the lexicographic ordering he is in support this paragraph again is written to support that methodology i can skim this and then the last one a model that is very simple like the lexicograph pehle a aayega fir b aayega fir c aayega simple isi situation mein follow karo it can be the best now is my main idea analytical analyze sorry is my main idea analyzing i'll give you two very close options bachcha bahut dhyan se sunna two close dete theek hai is my main idea analyzing two theories or promoting the usage of one theory over the other what's my main idea here if you given these two options which one will you choose the first or the second first is analyzing multiple theories of decision making based on economics or prioritizing one theory over the others what will you choose the second one what did i tell you the first and the last paragraph mix will give you the main idea the closure is promoting one over the other you cannot mark the first as your answer if you are confused between summary based questions options main idea options you have to focus on the first and the last paragraph link them and on the basis of that eliminate in some way prioritizing so dono me se choose karna to hamesha prioritizing choose karo bhi over the other i hope that makes sense i hope this class gives you a lot of insight on how to read how to eliminate options how to find main idea how to find tone of the author i hope that makes sense to all of you before i wind up i have a few things to tell you since i'll see you in the next class that's going to be next thursday uh we have our all india open mock cat going on uh for till the 6th of november it starts 28th and 6th november make sure you've given that it's a free mock everyone and anyone can register for that sit for it see where do you stand among thousands of cat takers we also have our cat 2023 program that we've just now launched you can enroll yourself for this program the details of the program are there under my video in the comment section in the description box do not leave the class without liking the video there's a lot of effort that goes behind bringing a free class to you if you think this has been beneficial for you please comment under the video it helps me a lot and it uh, aids my process it also gives me an insight of the fact that okay i'm doing some good work it gives me assurance about that make sure you comment under the video and you like the session you subscribe to the channel and you share it with your friends and then we have our test series that we've launched you could enroll yourself for the test series every detail about it is there under the video in the description box plus our last lap to cat goes on every day at 7 pm don't miss out on that subscribe to our channel right now that is all for today follow us on youtube instagram facebook telegram download our app on google play that should be all for today everyone i shall see you again next friday and next thursday sorry okay and that is all bye everyone god bless you read a lot work really hard